All right, welcome everyone. Um, so after a summer break, we're back with our speaker series uh, with the iHub. So uh, thank you all for coming. I know there's a few days left that are nice, this nice and warm in our future. So uh, it's great that you you came. Tonight we have a, a great fireside chat for you, which I think will be really interesting uh, with uh, Lauren Stunt and Adam Lamon, and I'll introduce them in a little bit. But first, I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of iHub and what we do and why we're even doing this to begin with. And I'll also talk about some future events that you should keep on your radar and come to do. So my name is Brian Mullen. I'm an innovation strategy manager here at the Brigham Digital Innovation Hub, which we call iHub. Uh, we were founded uh, four years ago to help advance digital uh, innovation here at Brigham and Women specifically. Originally, it was devices, diagnostics, and digital health, and how do we help our innovators move their ideas forward? That's a real core part of what we do. How do we create a foster, uh, help foster the culture of innovation here? And uh, now our role has expanded. Our role really is to help bring internal innovation forward. So I have an idea, what do I do next? Which is a challenge for a lot of researchers, doctors, administration here. So we are the first stop, or we want to at least be, come to iHub, we'll help you figure it out. That's the part of the team, the, the projects that I lead is, I have an idea, what do I do next? How do we navigate partners? How do I navigate finding the right solution? How do I figure out what problem I have and articulate that in a way that anyone else can understand? How can I start to develop solutions and put this in a way to see if it has commercial viability? And then how do we help navigate that through partners innovation, partners healthcare, spin it out as a startup? We've had uh, a handful actually spill, spin out, about five or six companies have spun out. Some have gone on to raise money. Um, some are still trying to raise money. So those are big successes for us and wins. And some of those you'll recognize and have won. We're in Techstars and Philips Accelerator. Uh, I think a few have been in Pulse at Mass Challenge or are going to be. So, uh, or at least we hope they're going to be in the next cohort. So that, that's a main part of what we do at, at the core of the iHub. The other side to that is how do we bring digital innovation into the hospital? So we're not going to solve everything. That's not our core competency. Uh, there's a lot of smart people out there that are there to help us try to solve the problems in, in healthcare here. And digital innovation is going to be key to that. And the hospital recognizes that from the top down all the way in everything we do. So how do we help create in that culture, create the systems and processes to enable digital innovation to come into the hospital or advance out? And how do we help align and identify which digital health uh, solutions best align with hospital uh, priorities so we can best align those and highlight those and really support those, while at the same time allowing our in doctors, researchers, and staff to pair with industry or startups to help also advance those earlier ideas that might not be a strategic alignment. So that, that's what we do. We try to, it's a lot. We cover the whole gambit of things. But at the core of it is how do we foster this culture of innovation? And one of them is doing these events and activities uh, so that we can connect with you because this is a collaboration. If we're going to solve the problems in healthcare through digital health, we need to collaborate with industry to startups to consultants and everyone in between. So this is the kickoff of our, our series. This, this fall bracket, we have this event. The next one that we have that's really big and we're very excited about is Hub Week. We're going to be part of Hub Week as a spoke event. If you haven't heard of Hub Week, it's, it's like Boston South by Southwest. It's bringing art, entertainment, innovation, culture, uh, technology all together. And most of the events are going to be downtown at uh, Government Center. But there are a few select sites that have what they call spoke events. And one, one event, which a few of our projects are going to be featured at, is on October 10th at Children's Hospitals and Pulse's Digital Health Expo in the Longwood area. So we're going to have a few tables there that you should come to and, and see me. I think I'm going to be manning one of those tables for a great platform we've created here at Brigham to help advance research using digital tools and make that happen faster, better, and cheaper. And then uh, the next day is our event. And our event is October 11th. It starts from... Uh, Two to five. Wait, three to three to five. Three to five. Sorry, thank you, Cassie. Three three to five, uh, and then from five to six is a really is a an, is a networking event. So, a plan to be here from three to six, and it's a scavenger hunt throughout Brigham to see what innovation is happening. And it's not just digital innovation. It's, this hospital does amazing things. So there's going to be a stop on in our Strata Center, which does simulations. There's going to be two stops there. One, you get to we have a center a, a simulation for being in outer space. So from the journey, the journey from Earth to Mars is what they're simulating. There's a 22-minute delay in communication. So if somebody gets sick, injured, what do you do? Because you have five astronauts, 10 astronauts, and, and 20 millions of, you know, 
thousands of miles away in our space at the 22 minute delay. We have that simulator here and you get to stop at that stop and be, be that astronaut and go through one of those simulations, which I think is super cool. Um, also at the Strata Center is, so our Strata Center does simulations and we have these really advanced uh, mannequins and dummies and technologies. Another room there, you're gonna talk about opioids, right? A problem that affects all of us and we've all had experience. How you recognize that somebody's overdose? So we have these very high tech mannequins that can simulate an overdose and we're gonna have one of our top experts walk you through what that looks like and what to do. And he's gonna talk about a technology he's researching to help make naloxone, naloxone easier accessible where maybe you can help somebody in a shorter period of time and maybe save some lives in the future. So th those are two stops. We're, you're also gonna help us think about the digital future of the hospital and come share some of your ideas about how can we make the experience here at Brigham better uh, through technology. And also stop the bleed, so tourniquets and trauma. We have a, the Stepping Strong Trauma Innovation Center here that was born out of the marathon bombing because we helped many of those victims here and, and how you innovate in trauma is a big question we think about. But one of the things you all can do is learn how to use a tourniquet. So if a trauma happens and you come along it, how, how do you use a tourniquet correctly? Because that can save lives. So there's another training you can go through to understand what you do and how to use a tourniquet properly. And then finally, the big end of our event is gonna be uh, a networking session right here from uh, five to six. And it's gonna be uh, with the Bright Futures, which is a big award we give out. The three finalists are gonna be giving TED-style TED talks about their projects and you get to vote and the award is $500,000 that will be awarded based off of a public voting competition. So come network. You'll see some other tables of work that we're doing here at Brigham, and, but you're gonna hear those talks, get to vote, and hear some really cool and interesting things. So th that's our lineup uh, through October. And then on November 9th, if you're more of a research person, November 9th is Discover Brigham. It's an all afternoon event and you're gonna see the, all the research being featured here at Brigham highlighted. And we're gonna actually have a session with uh, uh, Dr. Adam Lehman's gonna moderate on AI and the future of AI in healthcare. So th that's your docket. Please write those down, join our newsletter, sign up. I think most of you are on it. That's how you know about us. Follow us on Twitter, do all those fun things. Cassie and the team are always on that. So Cassie and Chen are back there and we have a great team to do this. So uh, without further ado, um, I would like to introduce our fireside chat members is Adam Lamon. Adam is our chief medical officer at Brigham Health, the assistant professor for emergency medicine and the attending emergency physician at Brigham Women's Hospital. And he's gonna be uh, talking with Lauren Stuntz today, who is the director of the Massachusetts eHealth Institute for Mass Tech, or also known as, as MeHi. He is an experienced and passionate leader uh, working to help Massachusetts leverage the digital health innovation for better economic and care delivery outcomes. So they're gonna have a chat. One of the goals for what we wanna do is, and why we do this event is to talk about collaboration. So how are we gonna work together? How do we figure out this digital innovation together so we actually get it to patients? So feel free to participate in this conversation. Uh, we'll definitely have time for questions at the end, but I'm sure they'll also take some questions in between and uh, raise your hand and I'll bring you the mic. So thank you all for coming and without further ado, come on up guys. Thank you for nice intro. We'll figure out whether we can yeah. fall off of these exactly. or, and perch. Can everybody hear okay? Sounds like it's echoing. Fortunately, we're in a hospital, so we'll right, have good exactly. care. Exactly, we'll be safe. <laughs> well, so we, um, we didn't actually, well, we prepped some, but we're, we didn't actually figure out who was going to ask the first question. <laughs> so uh, I'll go first. I'm, I'm, I'll just, I'm Lawrence Suns, as Brian mentioned, uh, director of the eHealth Institute at Mass Tech, uh, or MEHI, and we're a state economic development agency, also helping to support technology adoption. Uh, I'm particularly interested in chatting with, uh, with Adam and with your team because one of the things that we hear a lot from digital health startups is how do I, how do I test my products? This is one of the key areas of challenge for uh, digital health companies is how do I validate that whatever I just built actually works, has an impact on clinical care. So I'd sort of like to you know, pick your brain a little bit on how do we uh, how do you think about innovation? How do you think about accessing, uh, you know, companies accessing you? How do you think about incubating those companies? And maybe we'll start there and, and start from there. It's a great place to start. <laughs> um, 
So, so first I'd say just at a high level, I think it's really important to acknowledge that companies want to do this. Um, many of you may remember a comment from the president of the American Medical Association saying that digital health was um, akin to snake oil. Um, and I think a, a piece of that is that um, we're very evidence-based evidence -based in healthcare, right? We conduct studies on drugs um, to ensure that they're safe and to ensure that they have an effect and they have to go through an FDA review process. And we really want to see that data before we change clinical practice. Um, and so ideally, with new, pro with new products, whether they're um, IT products or pharmaceuticals or devices, we would have a similar approach. And, um, and I think that has been lacking to some extent. And so first, the realization that we should do this is very, very exciting. Um, and we think um, the Brigham is a great place to do that. So um, you know, we would love to be the partner of choice, and that's really our goal and why the iHub was established, is to really be the partner of choice to do that validation. And I would extend it a little bit um, further. You know, the reason we think we're a great place for that is, um, you know, number one, we have, um, you know, expert clinicians in pretty much every field, world-class researchers, um, we have a diverse group of patients, um, and we have the clinical environment of, in, in which you're in right now. Um, and so I would actually say, in addition to validating, we love to be involved in the design phases um, so that we can ensure that the people who are using those products, either the patients, the clinicians, maybe other staff in the hospital, are actually helping to build a product that will work with their workflows. So we want to be involved in the design stage, um, helping build it um, if the product is in that stage. Um, and then absolutely, as you're saying, we'd love to do the validation. Um, and we think, or we know, we have expert you know, researchers here who can actually do a, a robust clinical trial and then publish um, in a, in a you know, peer-reviewed medical journal. Um, so that's, that's one of our goals and, and the reasons that the iHub was established to facilitate that process. And how do, from your perspective, what looks like an ideal initial interaction with a, with a company? Or is there a way? I mean, one of the things we hear from folks is, oh, it's really complicated to figure out who the heck at partners I actually talk to. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever had that experience. No. <laughs> They just, so the good news, and I really give the team, the iHub team credit here, um, they've made this really easy. BWHIHub.org, and there is an idea share button. You click that, and it, it, it's a way to submit your idea and make the contact. And that's really what the iHub, one of the key purposes of the iHub is to be a matchmaker service. So that an interested um, company that wants to work with the Brigham, um, either on the clinical side, on the research side, has a venue to reach out. Um, and make contact with us. So, um, you know, I give Chen and, and Josie and others really credit for making that process as easy as possible. Cool. Cool. Um, and so, as you think about sort of the way that uh, the way that you sort of structure, how do you how do you integrate what you're doing with iHub into the strategic priorities of the institution? I mean, it's you know key. Key to all of this is making sure that whatever technology is tested, adopted, whatever is matches up with what you're what you're thinking through. Do you ever, so, how does that work? So really, really important question. I think Brian kind of nicely set the stage that the iHub has a couple of different, so to speak, missions that we do. Um, one is to sort of accelerate um, internal innovators' ideas, and sometimes that involves matching them with um, uh, partners, um, industry partners, either startups or, or more established companies to kind of accelerate their idea formation. And the other is actually um, to recognize challenges within the hospital and pair with, um, pair with companies, startups, to help solve those problems. So I think it depends on which um, pathway we're going down. Mm -hmm. But the key sort of for both is that, is that matchmaking. Um, we have to make sure if it's a, if it's a company that has a product um, that it really does meet a, a critical need in the hospital for us to proceed. And we've learned that if we can't identify a champion for that project, and a champion would be a clinical leader, an operational leader, depending upon the initiative, if we can't find someone internally that believes in this product, says it's an important need, um, that we probably shouldn't go too much further um, uh, with, with that. And, and similarly, if someone comes with um, a product that they want to validate and they need an expert clinician, we'll, we'll do our best to find the expert clinician pairing. Um, but we, if we don't have that perfect pairing, then it may not be the best fit. And I, and I do think it's important um, on both sides, on the, on the 
on the sort of industry side as well as on the um, program side to sort of be honest and open um, in those initial discussions with, you know, what is each party really looking for? What are the needs? And really spending time to make sure that, um, that we are good partners because th there's a lot of work to do. It's a challenging process. And, and when I've seen succeed is when both parties are truly committed and, and really see the value. Um, at the end of the day, we get through all the obstacles. But if one or the other is um, hesitant or not really sure, that's when it can, it can fall apart. Yeah, the, um, I was reading uh, the other day uh, just various blog things. One of the, the, big, the biggest competitor that for many digital health companies is do nothing, you know, in terms of bringing, you know, and, that, and that's an unfortunate reality of, of healthcare is healthcare is a very conservative for good reason. We don't want to kill people. We don't want, but do nothing as a competitor is often, uh, you know, the you know it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't take any of your time, and uh, is is something that many healthcare buyers will will run up against, which is absolutely a, a key challenge for digital health companies. Your your point about um, having a champion as well as is one of, I think, the key insights that has driven the Pulse at Mass Challenge program that I know you, you yeah. guys were, were a partner, partner in. And I would encourage, just out of curiosity, how many folks here are uh, sort of working on your own digital health company or digital health startup or, or thinking about it? Wow, every other audience I'm ever in, <laughs> like half the half the audience raises their hand. So, uh, actually, out of curiosity, sort of, what? How many folks are directly affiliated with the Brigham, uh, and how many folks are in sort of tech companies outside of? Uh, and where's everybody else from? <laughs> where, where? So we are from the uh, University Hospital in Reykjavik, Iceland. Uh huh. Okay. We are actually. Doing a little delegation mission yes, through exactly. the State Department, we right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Welcome. Thank cool. you. For Welcome. Uh, exactly. Us. Glad you're able to join us this evening. Okay. Well, I'll just talk a little bit about Pulse and Mass Challenge because the the interesting insight there is many accelerators will sort of support companies through uh, their you know whatever they want to do, um, but with Pulse, what we basically said is the only way you get into the program is if somebody has a challenge that they think that this digital health company can actually solve or has a chance at solving or may have a chance at solving sometime and they're interesting enough to invest the time and time and energy to partner with them um, and so last last session there were 30 odd uh, one went out of business so there were 31 then 30 uh, which is actually pretty pretty darn good odds over six months for digital health companies who are pretty new um, uh, one of them, a couple of them partnered with the, the Brigham. It would be interesting to sort of hear your thoughts on sort of what, what made some of those successful. And, you know, yeah, and maybe, um, maybe first, because yeah. I don't know if everybody in the room knows, can you talk a little bit more about, um, about maybe Mihai first and then, oh, sure. um, and then the Pulse, and then, yeah. I'm, then I'm happy to yeah, elaborate yeah, yeah, on yeah, how yeah, we've worked with them and the great success we've yeah. got. I just want to make sure it's an important initiative in the state yeah. that, that Lawrence is leading, and I just yeah. want to make sure everyone has the Yeah, has sure. The uh, sorry. So um, Mihai is a division of the Mass Tech Collaborative. Mass Tech is an economic development agency that's been around for 35 years. Mihai was created at Mass Techs in uh, 2008 as part of Massachusetts ongoing experiments in health reform. So in 2006, uh, Massachusetts passed, uh, you know, what's now popularly called Romney Care, uh, originally created by the Heritage Foundation, and it, the core of, core ideas became, uh, you know, the Affordable Care Act that the Heritage Foundation hates now. Anyway, we'll, we won't worry too much about that politics, but basically everybody in Massachusetts had to have coverage. Uh, that was 2006. 2008, there were some reforms, and Mihai was created to, uh, to help support technology adoption by providers. So when we, we started, we basically were focused on electronic health record adoption and creation and adoption of a statewide health information exchange. Um, starting in about 2012, 13, 14, our, you know, we sort of started to talk about this burgeoning cluster of digital health companies. One of the things that uh, the High Tech Act, uh, which funded uh, you know hospitals and and healthcare providers to adopt electronic health records, and then the Affordable Care Act, which has really doubled down on 
transitions to value-based care and so on. One of the things that that's created is a business model, a much more clear, a much clearer business model for digital health, where uh, where you can get paid for keeping people keeping people well and so on. And so we've seen a huge influx uh, growth of small digital health companies and growth over the past four years or so. And so Mihai was charged starting in 2014 with supporting the growth of this cluster of companies. 2016, Governor Baker announced a statewide digital health initiative and charged Mihai with being the agency that supports the state's interaction with that. And our, uh, our DNA at, at Mass Tech is around uh, working at the collaboration, sort of the intersection between uh, state government, uh, academic, you, you know, like academic institutions, and private companies. And so, you know, organizations like the Brigham, with their heavy research, uh, you know, interaction, affiliation with Harvard, uh, you know, are key key stakeholders in, in any of that. And so sort of broadly within the digital health initiative, our focus is on improving what we've, uh, sort of we've organized our work around something called the, that we call the digital health marketplace. And the idea there is that we want, you know, just the core goal of that is to make it easier and faster for Massachusetts companies to go from idea to scaled company. So overall, and we want, there's a whole bunch of things that we want to do with that and a whole bunch of um, sort of pillars of that. Um, but at its root, that's the, that's the goal is, you know, more companies taking less time to get to proven scalable idea. And so Pulse and Mass Challenge is one of the programmatic efforts that we are, uh, that we as a state have invested in and along with a lot of other, uh, private actors, uh, the states put in about, uh, put in two invest, uh, this is our second year, about a quarter million dollars and that's about, it's less than 20% of the total investment in Pulse. So it's many times overmatched, but it was important for, uh, from a state perspective, from a, you know, just a robustness and a sustainability perspective for the state to be at the table to get this thing off the ground. Uh, folks are familiar with Mass Challenge itself. So Mass Challenge is the world's largest uh, nonprofit accelerator. It might be the largest accelerator uh, and anywhere, and they, they run 128 companies through a program every year. Uh, they started in 2009. Mass Tech had, was the initial state dollars into that. So this is, and we're not, you know, now it's up and running. It's worldwide. It's incubating thousands of uh, companies or has incubated thousands of companies. Uh, Pulse is our next iteration on that and is specifically for later stage digital health companies. Not too big. You have to have raised, I think, less than $5 million. Uh, but you have to have a good enough idea that somebody's really interested in testing it out with you. And so that's the sort of the Pulse, um, you know, the, example. Th yeah. Thanks for giving that overview. I just, I just want to maybe highlight two points. Um, one is that I will make the argument that Massachusetts is, and specifically Boston, is the place for digital health. Um, we have the best healthcare institutions in the world here. We have the best academic centers in the world. Um, Harvard Medical School, I mean, you're on a campus here, and for those who aren't familiar with the area, you know, this is Brigham and Women's Hospital. Beth Israel Deaconess is right next door. Boston Children's is right behind us, connected to us. Harvard Medical School is here. Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. These are the world's leading healthcare organizations. Um, and then you couple that with Harvard University, couple that with Massachusetts Institute of Technology, all the pharmaceutical companies, um, device manufacturers, they are all here, um, including all the software companies. So this really is the ecosystem. And I think it's notable that our, gov our governor and our state um, really recognize this potential and are investing in this. And you know, obviously, you know, it will be beneficial to all of us, not only improving care, um, but also improving the, um, the economic um, climate here. And so I think we're really fortunate that um, Mihai and with Lawrence's leadership are, are really leading this because they certainly have the experience with health information exchange. They know all of the players, the key stakeholders in this, and have been able to accomplish a ton in a short amount of time. And it's a huge testament that the oh, Pulse of Mass Challenge yeah. is up and running with a digital specific um, cohort and, and already having success. So, yeah. you know, congrats. And it, it's really exciting um, to be part of this larger community. Yeah. Two weeks left to apply for this year's. So last year, 30 companies went through it. 
Um, I don't know if you know off the top of your head how many, but uh, partnered with the Brigham. Um, so we um, we've uh, we had sort of one that matched formally, yeah, um, and then we had a number of others that um, that we've been talking to in, as yeah. part of as part of the program. Some some of which are, are here today. Um, Torque, um, okay. uh, Joanna's here. Um, so uh, so you know one thing I will say um, is that. Um, you know, working with hospitals and academic medical centers, it takes time, right? I, I think startups, um, you know, want everything to happen very, very quickly. They're, they're, but, but here in our institutions, sometimes things take a little bit uh, longer, um, and there's good reasons for that. Um, you know, we have to get broad support from, from key stakeholders, um, and, and we need to make sure that solutions are, are safe. And so sometimes a little bit of extra time invested up front pays dividends down the road. And so um, we were very excited with the, um, with, a, with the company that we matched with at um, Pulse at Mass Challenge. We were still working through some governance issues and, and still um, hoping, to, hoping to make progress on a, on a live pilot on that. Um, but in the meantime, um, we actually are, are working with other um, Pulse at Mass Challenge companies, including um, Torque, and Joanna's here, um, Redox. Um, we've just signed an agreement to um, pilot Redox, which we're, we're Redox integration engine, which we're, we're very excited about and think that that's going to empower lots more relationships uh, through Mass Challenge. And um, Astarte is another company that I think was in the cohort this past year. Um, correct me if I'm. They were in Mass Challenge original. Oh, okay. Oh, to thank you for thank you for keeping me <laughs> accurate. But another uh, mass challenge uh, yeah, uh, related that we're working yeah. with. So, I, I mean, yeah. and again, I, I think we have to probably wait another year to yeah. sort of start tracking what the success is with with some of these uh, companies. And I, and I think that's a key point about digital health companies and startups and the partnerships here, and that's also actually sort of ratcheted up several fold for the partnerships that they have with some of the pharmaceutical companies. But a lot of the, uh, the digital health companies who partnered with, who went through Pulse and partnered with uh, pharmaceutical, there's some really interesting technology that could have real uh, impact in terms of clinical, uh, clinical impact. Like uh, there's, a, there's a company, with actually the winner of Mass Challenge, and the way that they uh, Pulse, the way that they measured is furthest progress uh, was this company, SyncThink, uh, who have some interesting digital technology for measuring eye movements as a way of uh, both measuring uh, concussive, you know, for, they're using it at, to try to measure uh, concussive uh, concussions and use it as a sideline thing. And obviously lots of noise right now on, the, on you know, with the NFL and a lot of the, uh, the work that's going on there. But they're look, talking to several of the Pulse companies on the pharmaceutical side because they think there's real applicability in uh, early detection for disease states. And they're, so they're talking about doing clinical trials. But it takes six months to write the trial protocol, much less you know, so the pulse accelerator is only six months long, and and so on. Uh, so, so it's an example of digital health and access in trying to leverage, sort of a program to help a, an organization like the Brigham access more and and better innovation. So, and, and one thing we're trying to do is, we want to match. You know, one of the goals of the iHub is to try to accelerate what we do in our institution, yeah. um, and try to accelerate it so that. Um, it, it better matches the startup timelines or expectations. And so we've done, I alluded to one of the things we did, but ba basically there's sort of, when I think through the steps that need to happen, at least with specific digital health innovations, there's sort of three key components. One is um, actually getting an agreement in place um, for us to work together. Um, and so we've created a process, and um, Josie Elias, who's here, and, and Chen um, Keo lead this, um, called the Digital Health Innovation Guide. Um, and it really steps companies that we want to work through through a process and provides a checklist of all the steps necessary to work with us. And then we're able to monitor their progression through those steps. We facilitate the appropriate connections, and we're able to escalate if, if things are not going in a timely fashion. And we'll be sharing, Chen will be um, sharing a, a checklist more broadly with the community so that, that others can, can benefit from our, at least from our process, and modify it um, uh, as they see fit in their institutions. So we sort of created a process to try to get people through the, the actual vetting process um, as quickly as possible. The next challenge we hit is they want data, right? We need to find a way to get our clinical data to the startups, the appropriate clinical data. And so this is where the partnership with a Pulsat um, Mass Challenge company, Redox um, Integration Engine, comes into play. Redox will allow um, the Brigham, we will basically send one interface um, of our data. So we'll send 
um, ADT, admission, discharge, and transfer data, scheduling data, orders data, results data, to Redox one time. So we'll, our team, my teams, will have to do one interface. Redox then will um, map that data to their own standardized um, interfaces. And then startups will work directly with Redox to be able to make the connection. And Redox publishes um, their APIs um, on, so that startups can easily connect. Um, and um, companies that are working with the Brigham will be able to do that um, at no cost to the company. Um, and so we think we've, um, by doing that, we've removed the bottleneck of these startup projects competing with other operational demands in the hospital. Because if there is an operational need for us to connect, let's say, our EEG system that's being used in the hospital and we want to integrate that, that is clearly going to take priority over our you know, Pulse at Mass Challenge yeah. startup that we want to sort of do a pilot with. And so we're hoping that that's going to be an important step uh, for us to actually accelerate getting data. Um, and we look forward to hopefully testing that with um, our first company, um, Torque, in the, in the coming um, weeks. Um, the, the, the next piece is, once you get the data, how do you get your, your innovation into the workflow of the users? And in our case, most of our clinicians and other staff are spending most of their time in the electronic health record system. And again, that becomes an ask to our electronic health record team, which is busy with lots of other um, priorities. Um, and so what we've done is created a research and innovations portal. It's basically a container app that allows us to very, very quickly integrate web applications. They can be standard web applications, smart on fire applications, um, but enables us to get that done very, very quickly. There's still a little bit of due diligence and governance that has to happen, but the actual process to add a link to an, to an external website is very, very quick, quick. So now you're able to very quickly get that in the environment that our key end users are using every day. And so we think that the combination of those three infrastructure pieces will enable us to work much, much quicker um, with startups. And we certainly look forward to testing ourselves, since it's a bit of a, a startup iteration. We look forward to testing that over the next couple of months to, to years, iterating our process so that we can be faster, more nimbler, um, and, and really able to be the best partner we can to startups and industry alike. So you hit on a couple of key points about the... You're like you're doing a lot of stuff to lower the amount of uh, cost, sort of cost both personnel as well as financial for you, to, for you all to integrate with startups. It's, but you also have been able to make the case that even having an iHub is an important piece of the puzzle, which uh, that's something that I hear a lot around uh, other institutions that they have had trouble making that case. How do you how do you think about the value that an iHub delivers to the Brigham, and and how do you sort of make it a str strategic enough priority to to invest, yeah. you know, in spaces like this? So, uh, so first of all, for the space, so we feel very fortunate that we have incredible leadership, um, Betsy Nabel, Ron Walls, um, and the rest of the senior leadership in the hospital that has been very supportive, and the Schlager family specifically who have supported uh, this area. Um, so we, we, thank, we thank all of them. But, but more specifically, I guess I would say, you know, uh, digital, um, is changing our lives, right? I, just one more show of hands. How many people have been to a physical bank in the last 30 days? One, two, three, four. Okay, all right, a little bit more. But <laughs> six or seven out of 50, right? So, um, you know, less than, you know, less than 20% um, have actually visited a bank. How many, um, you know, think about taxis, right? Uber has completely disrupted how we do taxis, how we, do, how we get a taxi, how we ride in it. And then, you know, probably maybe, maybe the strangest example I've, I've seen recently is um, an article in, in the Harvard Business Review last year that had a quote from the CEO of Domino's Pizza. And he said, um, Domino's is more of a tech company than a pizza company. I had to really think about that for a while, but when you start to think about it, what does Domino's really do? Um, the other piece of data he had is, and this is corporate Domino's. Corporate Domino's has about 800 employees, 400 are in IT and analytics, so 50% of their employees are in IT. And you know, as we start to think about that more, what do they really do? Well, you place an order for a pizza. How are we ordering pizzas now, right? We're doing it over the web, on our phones. It's, it's all electronic. Then how are we tracking the status of the pizza? Well, you want to get updates um, online. Um, and you know, third, how is Domino's corporate really monitoring all of their franchises? They're doing that electronically. So it actually starts to make sense w when you think about it. And, and I would argue healthcare is no different. We are going to be digitized. You know, it, digital technology is going to underlie you know, everything we do in, in healthcare. And so first, I think you have to see if leadership agrees with that general tenant. 
Um, and and, and I, we feel really fortunate here that they do. But then you have to go a little bit deeper, and you have to start thinking about you know, how can an innovation group really deliver value to the hospital? And in the case of the Brigham, that's why we do focus on two things. We focus on, you know, accelerating um, internal innovations, and Brian shared a little bit about the work we're doing there. That's very, very important because, first of all, the whole goal of a research organization here is not just to publish papers. We want to see that research translated into clinical practice. Um, and in order to do that, um, you know, we, the iHub has, has helped. And, uh, and I'll just give you one example. One of our, um, Hadi Shafi, one of our incredible um, uh, biomedical engineering um, faculty here um, developed an assay to do um, uh, sperm analysis or semen analysis um, basically at home. Um, but he perfected the, it's basically a chip. You can place whole, uh, a whole semen sample on it and it will do mot mot uh, motility and sperm count. Um, on it, and he's done the basic science um, to develop the assay and then did the validation to show that it was 98% accurate. So we have researchers that are doing this incredible work, but that alone is not enough to translate it. And so, um, you know, with Brian's help and others in the iHub, um, they helped him design um, an interface and then prototypes for how could someone use a smartphone to interact with that test and plug the chip into the smartphone, interact with the smartphone to do some data entry, and then have the smartphone send the results to the lab and, and to um, experts to, uh, to review. And, and that has been working with our translational accelerator and with our um, partners innovation, our, res our, um, our licensing team um, have now spun that out into a company. And so, you know, you're seeing the value delivered to the hospital, particularly for an academic medical center, of you know, researchers are increasingly needing to incorporate digital technologies into their research, no matter, even if it's basic science, may not have the expertise to do that. And so the iHub is adding that value, accelerating the project, and then working with others to, uh, to commercialize it, which then potentially lead to uh, revenue for the hospital. The other piece we added, specifically around the ROI equation, is you know, the, the, the um, accelerating internal innovation is very, very important, but again, it's gonna take several years to really potentially see a, um, a large um, increase in, in revenue. So the second piece is, the hospital itself, as we sort of just described, is, is undergoing digital transformation. And so we really look to what are some of the key challenges that the hospital is experiencing, and then try to match those challenges um, with startup companies or other solutions that will, uh, that will help us. And, and one example, um, which you'll see if you come to us for Hub Week, um, is wayfinding. Many of you trying to find this space for the first time, very, very hard to find. Um, and so um, we've built a digital wayfinding solution um, that will help our patients be able to better find clinics and, and other events throughout the hospital. And we can start to measure the ROI in that in terms of improved patient satisfaction. We can also look at on-time arrivals at um, clinical appointments. And as we extend this further, we might think about the software actually when the patient arrives in the clinic, automatically checking them into the clinic, um, helping them find their car in the parking garage later. So I think a key is, and that's why we've chosen both of these um, aims for the iHub, because I think there will be some things where we can directly measure the ROI and impact to the hospital that the leadership can see the value immediately of what's being delivered. And there may be some other things where it's gonna take several years, we'll still be able to monitor and measure it, um, but we hope both of those will deliver value. And I think we're seeing the trend that um, increasingly hospitals, um, medical schools are starting to invest in, yeah. in innovation centers. I think that's definitely true. I mean, here in Massachusetts, the Brigham has one, the General has one, uh, Children's has one, uh, Bay State out in, well, there's lots of digital health. I'm from the Commonwealth, so we want statewide innovation. Uh, you know, Bay State Health out at, in Springfield has an, has an innovation center, uh, TechSpring. Beth Israel has has an has a movement around it, although it's not as formalized as some of uh, as some of the others, and we're definitely seeing it. The other area that's pretty interesting that I think every single major so life sciences, as Adam mentioned, is uh, Massachusetts is basically the the epicenter for life sciences in uh, the U.S. Uh, with like all of the largest pharmaceutical uh, companies having their U.S. headquarters here. Uh, 
every single one that I'm talking to these days has like a digital health innovation person manager, which is yep. uh, an area that they didn't uh, two years ago that was unknown at, within the uh, within the pharma side, uh, and they're starting to do a lot more. Of that. And, and that's yeah. we were just discussing before this. It sounds like Mihai and 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 um, Mass Challenge are also yeah. trying to work on that front yes. to ensure. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about some of the early phases um, of bringing some of the innovation managers from all of these groups together so that they're meeting, networking, and, and talking about how to build that network. Yeah, I think it's really important. And one of the one of the cases we make for Massachusetts is that we have incredible talent here. We've got incredible medical talent. We've got incredible tech talent. We're graduating more students with STEM degrees than any place else in the country, both from undergrad and from grad. Uh, and then the you know, this this muscle memory and this sort of, there, there's a real science around driving innovation within an organization, within an institution. So uh, in partnership with Brian and uh, Bev Hardy and then innovation managers at uh, Mass General and Spalding Rehab and Beth Israel and a couple of other places, uh, we're bringing together a group of innovation managers. And this is really done, driven by them sort of saying, hey, we, we need a better way to codify our work, to share best practices, to network with each other, to uh, express our value to the organization, and to learn from each other. And so Mihai's role in that is really as a convener and as a supporter and as a coffee provider. So, you know, we, we provided, you know, the very expensive, <laughs> you know, coffee, uh, donuts, and uh, which were left off, uh, you know, on the table for the staff to eat for lunch later. It was great. Um, and, but that's a, a key piece of where, as a state agency, part of what we're, part of what our job is, is to bring together organizations uh, to convene them and to work on the things that it's in nobody's like central interest to do themselves uh, to fill those uh, fill those gaps in the in the ecosystem uh, so it's a really exciting uh, you know sort of piece of the Massachusetts ecosystem that we want to double down on um, can I build up yeah. off that and just ask yeah. you a question yeah. um, how do you measure the success or is the state holding you to any any metrics or criteria is kind of going forward yeah so there, we're, we're actually trying to figure that out, is what we should be measured on. One of the things we did as we got this off the ground is just uh, count. <laughs> count the number of companies that exist in, uh, in the ecosystem. Um, so, you know, when we first had, an, you know, we, we did this two years, two summers ago, uh, and we came up with about 200 companies. Now there are, you know, and I don't think that, I think we missed some in the yep. first pass, but at massdigitalhealth.org, there are 350, or I think I was talking to uh, one of the team today, she said there were 360 now digital health companies headquartered here in Massachusetts. That doesn't count the extraordinarily large companies like Microsoft, Optum, Google, uh, IBM, who have put a lot of their digital health work in Massachusetts, in Cambridge, or in, or in Boston. So those are uh, some really interesting stats. I mean, it's... It's huge. So we, that's one piece. We measure, yeah. you know, we count. Individual programs like Pulse, uh, we will be tracking over years as we try to figure out uh, how much money do those companies raise, how many new customers do yeah. they get, how, uh, whether they stay in business. It, it's a, and it, part of this is there's a little bit of a challenge in digital health. Part of the challenge is defining what is digital health. Um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics won't, uh, has not counted that, <laughs> um, you know, so everybody asks us, you know, the typical measure is number of jobs, right? Yeah. Uh, it's really hard because they count tech jobs, they count healthcare IT, so your entire uh, IT staff at Partners Great. is counted We're in one of those. Contribute. <laughs> We're happy to contribute. Um, so that, that's one, uh, or those, that's some of the challenge, but I do think that there's some qualitative measurement that we're thinking about, which is how easy is it to do business? Like how many of people's initial customers actually are here in Massachusetts? That's one of the things. How easy is it to, you know, how many of the companies have innovation managers or how many of the customers have innovation managers? How, uh, you know, those sorts of more qualitative uh, things are important for us as well. This is great. So I'm going to, you know, we have the same challenges here. Yeah. Of measuring, so <laughs> exactly. It's great to hear. It's early stage and we yeah. look forward to partnering yeah. with you.
Yeah. Let's turn it. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, thank you for a great presentation. I'm sorry it was a bit late. It was a long journey. Um, I have a question in terms of putting this together. The, the heart of this is data, whatever we're doing. And a central issue, particularly around clinical data, are the contexts in which the data are generated. And so what I'm curious about is to what extent are you trying to look at the issue of, for an individual data point, how do I document within, in a sense, within that object what generated the data point? So, for example, there'll be subtle differences between labs. Uh, there are all sorts of things, digital devices, the huge differences, so that when the clinician begins to lever that data, they know that X here and X there are actually comparable data points. Yeah, it's a, it's a central problem. Um, it's, it's probably one of the grand challenges in informatics, you know, for the last 20 years. Um, you know, I think that's why we're excited about the Redox partnership. Um, they have pretty standard data dictionary. We will do our best to map our data to their data dictionary and do our best to ensure that the data we're pulling is um, what the clinicians, where the clinicians are putting the data elements, that we're getting the accurate data, um, and that they're well-defined for others to use. Yeah, so, the, well, for some data, right? So I think it's the metadata, it's a, it's a really important point. And I would say for our physiologic data, our biomedical data, we're, we're very, it's, it's very important that we document, for instance, what's the source of the blood pressure measurement? Um, did it come from an arterial line? Did it come from a manual blood pressure? Um, so I think that becomes very important. Um, you know, for a note, there, you know, who wrote it, what time did they write it. Um, so I think it, the, the metadata depends on what data element, but yes. Yeah, and I, and I would actually argue that you're talking about issues that we're going to run into 10 years from now once we solve the yeah. problems around access, just basic access to data basic capacity to uh, make the data electronic and combine it into, large, you know, so where, where I'm going with a lot of this is even in just kind of, even in uh, just standardizing ways that digital health companies will interact with institutions to get access to data. Uh, the Redox example is a really interesting one because it has the, the promise that as Redox, to basically exponentially increase the access that startups have and new and digital health companies have to data. So if Torque, you know, works with Redox, as Redox signs up all of the hospitals that they have as customers, Torque will be able to sell their product into each of those other hospitals. And so that, that solves a large problem and Torque doesn't then theoretically at least have to, uh, you know, do a new data use agreement and a new uh, data agreement. But, you know, we have... Um, across the state of Massachusetts, we're probably better than any place else in the United States in terms of digitizing, like visit data, electronic health record data. All the hospitals have uh, electronic health records, 95% of physicians, about 90% of skilled facilities. Um, ONC uh, just did a study, uh, the Office of the National Coordinator, only 60% of skilled nursing facilities in the country have a uh, electronic health record, and that is like hugely beyond what it, what it used to be. So uh, we have a, have a problem just getting the data, you know, at a place like the Brigham, a lot of our data is already electronic and, and somewhat integrated, and, and we can start worrying about which device created the data. But but, yeah. I, but I agree. It's an important question to be able yeah, to meaningfully absolutely. use the data. And the more we can think about the ontologies that we're storing, the metadata absolutely. that we're storing with the data now as we're establishing yeah. the databases, the, the better it'll pay off in the long yeah, term. Absolutely. So really, really important point. Thanks for, thanks for raising it. It sounds like both of you have had the opportunity to look at the digital health landscape through multiple lenses throughout your career. I was wondering if you could talk about some differences you've seen approaching this world from the clinical, private, and public sectors. Sure. Um, it, so I, I, I don't have a clinical background at, at all, but I have worked in the private sector and, uh, and public sector. What's really interesting to me about the public sector is 
I get the opportunity to think about what benefit, what has the opportunity to benefit the entire uh, Commonwealth and all of like my neighbors and you know my family and my my friends and so on, as opposed to trying to uh, think about how do I best commercialize and sell my products and services. Um, so, so I, I think it's just a you know I would encourage folks if you ever get a chance to in the course of your career. To, ha to work in some sort of not-for-profit or public uh, environment because it really does give you an eye-opening uh, opportunity to, to take a step back from a you know, purely commercial interest and to work from you know, that perspective. But. You know, I would just add that we're all trying to figure this out. Yeah. And, I, and I think in, the, in a very real sense. So, and that's why these partnerships and um, Mihai and, and Pulse of Mass Challenge are so important and, and so incredibly unique to, to Massachusetts. What I'll say just as a, as a physician, um, what drives me at the end of the day, and I think many of my uh, colleagues here who are, or all of us who work in healthcare, is, um, you know, and I'll actually just make it even bigger going back to the quadruple aim. Like, we are here for the patient, right? So we want to improve overall health of the patient, number one. We want to improve the quality and safety um, that we deliver uh, to the patient. We need to reduce costs, right? We, are, we have challenges across the country with, with astronomical increases in health. It's, it costs and it's not sustainable. And so we've got to find efficiencies. And then fourth, we're driving our clinicians and our staff absolutely bonkers with additional work. We're creating huge burdens for them, and we've got to find ways to make efficiencies for the clinicians. That quadruple aim is what we're looking for, what we should all be looking for in public, private sector, and healthcare and clinical settings. And when we find solutions that clearly fulfill all four, they should be a slam dunk. Um, and so that's my challenge to, to all of you is, Go for the quadruple aim, and when you've got it, reach out to us, both of us, yeah. our groups, and, and that, that's what we're looking for. And that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's what makes this so incredible, is that we're, we're doing this to improve healthcare for, for all of us and, and for our families. What were the hurdles you faced internally when trying to implement all these innovations? <laughs> there are, you know, that's, 30 seconds or yeah. less. I mean, that's why we have the, the innovation hub. I think at, at each stage of the way, um, there are challenges, right? So um, first, agreeing, finding the right partners, right, to, to do it first on the, on the corporate side and on the internal side, getting the right, getting the match, right? Then getting through the contracting, getting through um, the technical side, vetting the information security, um, uh, and then getting the pilot going funding for the pilot. I mean, there are, you know, it's probably a separate talk on, on all of the challenges, but that's one of the reasons that we're trying to create these structures. Um, Pulse at Mass Challenge, the IHUB, the innovation centers, and all of the other hospitals, we're trying to facilitate that and break this down. This is so important to, again, to, to, to improving how we do things um, in healthcare. So sorry for the high-level answer, but it's a it's important question. And that's part of what we're trying to do with the marketplace is try to have programs and solutions in Massachusetts that address, you know, common challenges at each stage of a company. You know, like somebody who's trying to scale a company has different issues than somebody who's trying to figure out, do I have a good enough idea for it to become a company? So. Thank you. You mentioned cost, and then I start to think about how do you get the payers involved in this partnering discussion as well? Do either of you have any experience to give there? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things we like we put together a, a marketplace working group to sort of organize our thinking around how to do, and pairs are represented on that. And one of the things you'll see, uh, Tufts, Blue Cross. Uh, I don't know if Harvard has a direct investment arm, but they have a, they work with very closely with us on digital health. They are very interested in uh, digital health solutions. Actually. I'll, make a call out to Mark uh, here, who's one of the co-founders of CAKE. Uh, CAKE is an advanced care planning, uh, sort of focused on working with, uh, with individuals and employers. They went through Pulse last program. Their matched partner with that was Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, who tested their solution with their employees. And then, uh, then as part of the Pulse program, we got it into working with the city of Boston. So health plans are very interested in finding innovative solutions that can help their members improve quality of life. And part of that is, you know, will have, you know, trickle down effect to cost of care or direct effect to uh, cost of care. I agree, and one of the nice things about 
Pulse at Mass Challenge is that multiple groups can come together and sponsor, um, sponsor yeah. an initiative. And yeah. so in some cases, you'll have a health system and an insurer and maybe a tech company or a farm company all come together and work on a project together. And, and I think I feel really fortunate um, in the Innovation Hub that we have Dr. Jeff Greenberg as our medical director who has extensive experience with our physicians organization who negotiate the contracts with our insurers and has insights and um, relationships with the folks that are doing that. And so um, you know, those, are, those are specific areas and needs that when we can find the right solution make a lot of sense. Well, one, one last question. Um, I just have one question. Um, many of the current AI approaches are data driven. That is to, to, to say if there is no data, they can't show you anything. I just want, I'm wondering if there is a startup saying they have some ideas, but they just need the data to start their algorithm, for example, to train their algorithm model, and then they are going to show you something. How do you select those startups where they cannot show you anything, but they have some general sort of computational ideas, but they just don't, they don't have data? It's a great question. You probably, you probably have some insights yeah. into and some initiatives on this as well. I'll just say for us, it comes back to creating the relationship. Um, and so if we can find, you know, we're a research organization as, as well as a clinical, you know, delivery organization, usually with the very early stage companies, particularly computational, we're going to want to link you with a researcher here that's interested in either the problem or has similar skills. When that connection can be made, then we have mechanisms of creating sponsored research agreements and, and other agreements that allow you to collaborate um, with one of our internal experts um, to be able to access data and to be able to access the expertise of that particular primary investigator and the rest of our community. So that's why um, that match process and then the agreement that subsequently follows um, is, is necessary in general to access certainly identified data with, with from, from our institutions. And one of the things uh, we're looking at statewide as we, as we think about this key challenge is establishing uh, sandbox environments that digital health startups can get access to either with uh, faked data uh, or synthetic data that are created in real time off of large data sets. There are a couple of in really interesting uh, technologies, uh, both from like MITRE Corporation, who are, you know, they're a federally funded uh, research and development center who have created open source tools for creating large volumes of synthetic data. Uh, and a couple of private companies that we're talking to about opportunities to create synthetic data because we see this as a key issue that uh, you can't tell if you've got a good idea <laughs> until you test it and it can be very expensive and time consuming both for uh, the data holder uh, and potentially, not dangerous is the wrong word, but there's, there's concern that a data holder has around giving you know new startup that they don't know uh, access to that data uh, as well as so it'd be better if and that can be also complicated and time-consuming just from a legal agreement it'd be better if there were synthetic data sources that would be safely available to the startup so we're trying to we're working on uh, activity to create that as a piece of the ecosystem and I'm just to just to build up that it's an awesome that would be yeah. an incredible resource yeah. for the entire ecosystem Absolutely. I'm thrilled yeah. that that's yeah. a priority yeah um, I, I will just add that for years, we try to test our own internal systems with test data. Yeah. And this is from my IT hat, not my, uh, not yeah. my uh, innovation hat. But we have trouble creating our own test environments and populating them with realistic data. Yeah. Um, and we try to de-identify. It's very hard to de-identify. There are some promising startups in this space, and we're certainly excited to see where that goes. But that's why I think the end, once you get to a certain point, you really do need to be testing with real clinical data. Back to the original, one of the first questions, the context is important, so understanding um, the workflows. I'll argue in healthcare, you can get a solution that works for 80% relatively easy. Um, it's that long tail um, that is very, very difficult with everything we do in healthcare IT and digital health. And you may not think it's important to get the 20%, but here's why it is important. When, we're, when we have um, you know, uh, 60,000 ED visits a year, you know, several million um, blood draws um, every year, um, you start to see the tail. The, the last 20%, it's just a, you know, the law of large numbers. You start to see it. And if you haven't addressed those, you can actually have very significant gaps that can lead to patient safety events, including death. Um, and so you know, that's where this space becomes really tricky. In other spaces, you might be able to get away with the 80%. In healthcare, in some cases, you've got to have 100%. 
um, and it's got to be well tested and validated or we run into trouble. And this is, you know, again, speaking from my health IT experience where, you know, we implemented a new lab system and you would think, well, if the test is only ordered once in a while, you know, maybe we don't have to pay as much attention to it, but actually you have to pay as much attention to that as you do the, the CBC that's ordered, you know, thousands of times a day. So um, just, just some challenges on the data side. And this is actually, this is an area, data, data access, access to integrated data is, I think, one of the key challenges that we have to overcome in, uh, in digital health. And we have to make sure that investors and startup entrepreneurs recognize that this is time consuming and can be expensive and should build that into their business plans. Uh, I hear a lot. Well, just give me access to, you know, just to, hosp Mr. Hospital, just give me access to the data. I'll prove that my solution works. Healthcare data needs to be protected uh, much more sort of seriously than a lot of the, a lot of the other data out there for a, a lot of reasons, so. And, and I'll just add, you know, one thing, you know, that, that sort of keeps me up at night. Um, first of all, I have young kids, so they, they <laughs> Other than but, that. But, um, but other than that, um, you know, information security is, is really an issue. And if you didn't realize it before, we, we saw Equifax, right? And that affected half the United States population, right? So, um, you know, with healthcare data, it's even more sensitive. Um, and, and I would argue that, you know, th that is the most, the, the number one concern I have with these pilots is, is it safe, number one, for our patients, number two, for our institution, um, you know, n n just, that is that is sort of the, the most critical thing, and I would argue we have to get that right because if we don't get that right and we see breaches, um, it will likely it could be the end of our efforts in digital health locally, could be the end of potentially the end of the company, um, and will set us back significantly. So I would just one piece of advice: you know, you want data, let's just make sure we're working um, to make it as secure as possible. And there's some exciting startups in that with that challenge as well that are trying to create environments that they manage that that are kept up to date. So there's some exciting advancements, but. We really need to take that really, really seriously. Yeah, cyber cybersecurity needs to be built into digital health companies way earlier than it has been uh, traditionally. This is actually a key initiative of the governors as well that Mass Tech is uh, organizing. So there was a cybersecurity as part of his sort of economic development and sort of focus on the tech economy. Cybersecurity is a key piece. Uh, we ran a statewide cybersecurity forum for the governor and for uh, a whole bunch of stakeholders across all industries a couple weeks ago, and, and at that, uh, Governor Baker announced that at Mass Tech, we're going to be launching a cybersecurity uh, resource and, and development and growth center for that will, and part of my job is to make sure that the digital health initiative is tightly integrated with that cybersecurity resource center and growth center. So. So I'm sure we can talk all night. So thank okay. you so much for this. This is exactly what we were hoping to, to get into okay. a conversation. So uh, thank let's thank Lawrence and, and, and Dr. Lehman for your time. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. This is great. Thank, you so thank you all for coming.